Zaro famously wields three katanas at a time, with one in each hand and one in his mouth. Zaro's somewhat ridiculous three-sword style requires the former pirate hunter to go through numerous swords. One Piece's most powerful swords are a set of named swords that each have their own grading, ranking how strong they are. Zaro has acquired many of these over the series, which can make them tough to keep track of. Here is a list of every named sword the Straw Hat Swordsman has possessed. Wado Ikamanji. Zaro's first ever named sword is already of great quality. Wado Ikamanji is one of the 21 great grade swords, which is only inferior to the supreme grade sword. It was forged by the legendary Shimatsuki Kozaburo, who also forged Inma, and was handed down to his descendants including Kuina. Kuina's father took Zaro in as a disciple when he was a child, and Zaro eventually became Kuina's friend and rival. After Kuina heartbreakingly dies deeply affecting the young Zaro, he requests Wado Ikamanji from his master who gives it to him. Since then, Zaro has been wielding Wano Ikamanji throughout One Piece. Its sharpness and durability prove itself during his fight with Myhawk. After taking Myhawk's attack without Haki to reinforce his katanas, only Wado Ikamanji remains intact, showing the sword's strength. Due to its power and significance to Zaro's character, it is still one of the three swords that Zaro wields at the start of One Piece's final saga. Sanai Kitetsu after losing two of his katanas in his battle with Myhawk, Zaro went shopping for more when the straw hat stopped in Logetown. When Zaro found a shop selling katanas, he picked Sandai Kitetsu out of a barrel, not knowing its significance. Sandai Kitetsu is a grade sword forged by Kazuki Sukiyaki that also carries a curse so powerful the shopkeeper initially didn't want to sell it to him. However, this didn't bother Zaro, so he decided to test whether his luck or the sword's curse is stronger. He threw the sword into the air then stretched out his arm to see if it would get cut. While this was definitely one of Zaro's coolest moments and the test convinced the shopkeeper to sell it to him, Sandai Kitetsu is unfortunately one of the weaker swords Zaro has wielded, being only a grade sword. Despite this, it is still one of the swords that Zaro wields going into One Piece's final saga. Yubashiri After witnessing Zaro's feat, the owner of the katana shop decides to give their family heirloom to Zaro for free. That family heirloom is Yubashiri, a skillful grade sword, which makes it more powerful than Sandai Kitetsu, but still weaker than the other blades Zaro has wielded. Unfortunately, during the buster call on Eni's lobby in One Piece's best arc, Shu, a marine captain who has eaten the rust rust fruit, gets a hold of Yubashiri and corrodes it into a pile of rust. The only thing that remains after that is a small blade in a hilt. Zaro finally puts it to rest on the Rumbar Pirate's gravesite on Thriller Bark after he obtains another more powerful sword, Shusue. On Thriller Bark, Zaro met the zombie of Ryuma, a legendary samurai from Wano Country who One Piece has revealed is Zaro's ancestor. They clash swords, and Ryuma recognized Zaro as a worthy swordsman. Because of this, he bestowed his powerful blade Shusue upon Zaro. Like Wado Ikamanji, Shusue is also a great great sword. It is also a black sword like My Hawk's Yoru, which means that it has been infused with Haki, increasing its strength. This strength allows Zaro to wield considerable destructive power with the blade. Since it was owned by Ryuma, it is considered as one of Wano Country's national treasures. So when Zaro finally visits Wano, he returns it to Ryuma's grave and exchanges it for the much more powerful Enma. Enma. After Zaro returns Shusue to Ryuma's grave, Hayori gives him Enma the katana she received from her father Kazuki Odin. It's a great grade sword like Wado Ikamanji and Shusue, although it isn't a black sword yet. However, it's said that once Emma's blade has been turned black, it may increase in rank and become a supreme grade sword like Maihawk's Yoru and Whitebird's Murakumajiri. Emma also has the peculiar ability to suck up its wielder's armament hockey, which often results in an attack stronger than intended. Being wielded by Kazuki Odin, it manages to cut through Kaido's almost impenetrable defenses and leave a scar. In Zaro's hands, it manages to bring out a similar attack, scarring the powerful Yonko a second time. While the sword is difficult to wield and causes him difficulty in the raid on Onigashima, Zaro ultimately masters it during his epic fight against King. This is the final and most powerful of Zaro's current swords entering One Piece's final saga. While these five swords are the only named blades Zaro has wielded in the series thus far, they each prove how powerful the Straw Hat Swordsman is. Some of the swords like Inma would even be impossible for a less skilled fighter to wield, demanding a firm mastery of hockey. 
Of course, it is likely that Zaro will receive another powerful named sword before the series is over, likely replacing Sandai Kitetsu. After all, Zaro hasn't wielded any supreme grade swords yet like his ultimate rival in Minermai Hawk.